Welcome to day 549 of our Web3 journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in DSOFI, which is a Web3 mobile app built on the DSO blockchain. So before we get into some of the latest DSO news, Brian, what is the latest with Terra? Yeah, so you're all familiar with Terra, Luna, the stable coin. Uh, and everything that went down back in May where it basically collapsed. But Interpol has issued a red notice uh, for Terra's founder, uh, Do Kwan. A red notice basically will give law enforcement around the world the ability to provisionally arrest Kwan if they came upon him. Uh, so if Kwan showed up in Canada or Italy or England, those local law enforcement would be able to arrest him, at least provisionally. Uh, in May, Terra's blockchain was temporarily halted after the collapse of the stablecoin Terra USD and Luna. And it wiped out almost $45 billion in market cap within like six or seven days. Uh, and, and prosecutors in, in uh, Kwan's native South Korea, they've sought his detention but police are unable to find him. They say he's not in South Korea. Kwan has maintained that he is not on the run, uh, but his location is unknown after Singapore authorities said he's not in Singapore either. Uh, so Kwan tweeted previously that, quote, unless we are friends, have plans to meet, or are involved in a GPS-based Web3 game, you have no business knowing my GPS coordinates. So he says he's not on the run. It appears he's actually is on the run. They're looking to arrest him. So it seems like he's probably a fugitive and there's a lot of angry people out, a lot of money. So uh, this, this guy who was really at the top of his game, he was looked up to, he had, has over a million Twitter followers. Uh, he was he was on all kinds of uh, analyst shows like ARK Investment, which is this big fund in the US. They had him on their podcast. It, he's a well-known, he was well-respected. And now it appears, even though he says he's not on the run, he likely is on the run. Well, he might not be on the run. He might just be in hiding. There's a difference there, right? right? So like he could be hiding in a cave and be stationed there for months at a time. So he's not actually well, it, moving. Or running you know, <laughs> on the run means the same as hiding from the authorities i would say i would say on the run means you're like jumping around trying to like <laughs> deceive right. authorities but either way you're deceiving them right and either way you're trying to avoid your arrest i mean if you're if you really think you're innocent turn yourself in and you know let the courts of court of law decide that you're innocent yeah and, and, and i mean we can't base everything on the laws of the united states because some but, of these other nations, South Korea, Singapore, they do have very strict laws. Uh, so some I, some I, some countries, I mean, if he is in North Korea, I'd be saying, hey, I don't blame him, run, run far. So <laughs> if yeah, he's arrested I, by Interpol, where does he actually get charged? And which jurisdictions will he fall under? Do you, do you know? Like, could, would it be the country he's called in? Would it be America? Would Like, where would he actually have to face char possible charges? I believe he'd be extradited to the nation where he was operating from. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's they, there's extra extradition treaties that would enable those countries to bring him back. And uh, I'm guessing that's what would happen. Interesting. Anyhow, moving on to Diso blockchain, Nader Al Naji, the creator of Diso, made a very interesting post yesterday. I thought, and I'm just going to go through some of the things he said. The post read, why is on-chain content important? And then he lists some reasons. And one reason was, when content is on-chain, other apps can build off of it. Instead of having five companies produce our feeds, we can have thousands, most native to the countries they're serving. So, you know, we don't have the Facebooks, Twitters, links in, Instagrams, uh, TikToks, all owning that content and all, you know, building off of that content. And they're all building off that content exclusively based on their own database. Now we have thousands of companies that can build apps on this huge amount of content, eventually huge amount of content that's all shared between the apps. So imagine if Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok all used the same database and pulled what they wanted and all had the same users 
with the same followers, but they pull the data that they want, like TikTok would pull the videos. I, I think that I think that's a huge benefit if social media moves in the Web3 direction, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. And, and this is something we've been pushing for a long time. Uh, it's decentralization and, and you have to love decentralization because it allows the democrat for the democratization of posting and of accounts and and just it doesn't centralize control with one two three corporations that are powerful and that can really influence things yeah so number two the second point he brought up was when content is on chain the best researchers in the world can train models on it competition for labeling will emerge to tag things as not safe for work fact slash opinion or even by topic misinformation can also be detected much more effectively today private companies are reason responsible for finding misinformation but what if the entire world could engage in a transparent conversation around it so this is an interesting point too that you know today on twitter let's take for example twitter's banning of influential political figures you know, they banned a lot of people on the right, perhaps many rightfully so, Dep I guess, depending on your position, you might say they were unfairly banned. Uh, Twitter decides this, you know, Twitter decides what's fact, what's opinion, what's over the line when it comes to maybe inciting violence, or maybe when it comes to misinformation. But Twitter controls that data, and they also make the rules. So it, it's kind of a conflict of interest, I think. So if in the future, third parties could create these labeling systems for, you know, what's fact, what's opinion, and then the nodes, individual nodes could decide what they want to show. Maybe they don't want to, maybe they, they want to keep these labels as fact versus opinion so that their readers know that they're reading facts or opinions. I think the future there is huge as well if things move into the Web3 so, social media world. Yeah, and, and I, I think that it allows for, so, I, I mean, obviously information and misinformation, it can be interpreted. Some people that are caught up in conspiracy theories, they're going to say that your, your misinformation isn't misinformation. But I think that this allows an opening. So if the conspiracy theorists want to uh, still be able to have their posts that say that the United States is run by lizard people uh, all over the place. They are. Right? They might be banned. That content could be banned from a, a bunch of the nodes, but there could be other nodes that bring that up. So their posts aren't being completely squashed. They're being filtered on a high level on some nodes, but on other nodes, it's still there. And they can still, they can still participate in the freedom to uh, express their conspiracy theories. So I, I think it, does ha it is a solution. Uh, and as you move forward, the nodes that might allow for the crazy conspiracy theorists to post probably wouldn't get ad dollars, probably wouldn't be able to really do too well while the nodes that are actually more legitimate and, and do block out some of the misinformation could become more well-known. And, and now it's just the free market dynamics that will be at play. And I mean, maybe it'll go the other way because maybe people find out maybe the United States is run by lizard people. Well, so you said the thing about ad dollars. I think if somebody started a lizard people node and the whole node was just, or app, I guess I should say, the whole app was just social media posts about the world being the government world governments being run by lizard people they would have ad dollars but i think the rowdy reptilians would probably advertise on that note don't you think yeah for those who don't know the rowdy reptilians is actually an nft series on the DSO blockchain and they basically drew all people as these lizard people and so, some of the earlier series they had a lot of political political figures i think there's one for hillary clinton one for donald trump it was pretty funny yeah, and that's, that's Chris. Uh, he's awesome, Illuminati. Uh, check out the Rowdy Reptilians. Anyhow, moving on. When you build on a blockchain, you get access to money-native features that you don't get from centralized apps. DSO gives every user a public-slash-private key, making it completely seamless to tip them, for them to mint an NFT, for them to mint-slash-transfer coins, etc. There will be many 
other innovations that mix money and social, and blockchains are uniquely suited to powering these kinds of apps. So yeah, you get these uh, money native features. You, you're not the, just an influencer who is hoping that you know brand XYZ is going to send you a scarf because you look really good wearing scarves, and your 20,000 followers will see you wear the scarf and be like, hey, that's a really cool scarf. I'm going to buy it. And you know that's minimal. Like, How much money can you really make from wearing a scarf in a picture? I'm sure some people with a massive amount of followers can make a lot of money. But what if you could also make money from people who like your post, just giving you a few pennies or giving you a, less than a penny with a diamond tip, and you get a million of these diamonds, and you know it's worth a hundred thousand dollars, or it's worth ten thousand dollars. There's so much potential there, and you could mint NFTs, and those NFTs could be tied to merchandise or your own brand, or there's just so many different avenues you can go when you use these money-native crypto features intermingled with your social media. Yeah, and I bet you that Kim Kardashian can probably make twenty thousand dollars for wearing a scarf and posting a picture of herself on Instagram, but the normal person can't. But Kim Kardashian could also post that same picture on Deso. And if she had millions of followers, she might make $50,000 in diamonds. So it just opens up a whole nother level of earning potential. Exactly. So, and he, he made another one bonus. Number four was bonus. When content is on chain, it is resistant to censorship. No more getting blanket banned by a handful of corporations. And this is important. So there's still going to be censorship in the, in the way that any app can still ban you. Any app can still censor your post. But remember, all that data, your username and all of your posts aren't just on that one app. That, that information's in a database that's shared by the entire blockchain, anybody who is tying into the DSO blockchain. So if app XYZ bans you and block, deletes all your posts, your posts and your username are still going to be able to post on app ABC and app DGF and, you know, multiple apps. So sure, at some point, I guess you could be blocked from every app, but I'm sure there'll be some apps that, you know, just don't block anyone or just only block like super severe things. So there's a lot of potential there. You don't have to worry about building up a huge following, you know, set, creating a name for yourselves and then having just a corporation say, nope, no more. We're just turning you off. That's not no longer an issue in Web3. Well, and it also takes some of that responsibility out of the hands of the Twitters and the Facebook. So Twitter, if Twitter had their data as a fire hose and anybody could bring up that data uh, on any node they want to create. So if, you, if I want to create Twitter 2 or Twitter Uncensored and then bring up the fire hose of data and decide what I want to ban, that kind of alleviates Twitter's responsibility to whether they to make those decisions, whether I should ban this person or block this or delete this, because they know that if they do, then it's still available to other people. And if they don't, then maybe other nodes would block it. So it, I think that it just kind of shifts the responsibility from one individual company to kind of become like a democratized feature where if you do ban, then who cares? Other they, people aren't going to be super pissed off because they can go elsewhere and get that content. Yeah. And if, then if you use the third parties to kind of create your block lists, then you're not the one to be blamed. You know, that third party could be blamed and you could always choose another third party that does other block list. So there's, there's so, there's so much potential for web three. And I think a lot of people miss a lot of these points that Nat are pointed out, but yeah. moving on, uh, Diso OG MTK Matt, he arrived in Berlin and he ran the Berlin marathon. And yesterday he has successfully f crossed the finish line and he was sponsored like to get him there. He raised money through sponsors and there are many DSO people, NFTZ, DSocial World, Zirkles, Musai, and like dozens and dozens of just users on DSO helped contribute so that he could fly to Berlin and partake in this marathon. And congratulations, Matt. And he wore a shirt with everybody's, all the sponsor names on it, on his back. Uh, you can go to the post linked to in this, uh, above this video and check it out. And congrats, Matt.
Awesome job. I, yeah, I could not imagine running a marathon. I couldn't imagine running like five or six miles, much less, what is it, 26 miles for a marathon. Yeah. So great job, Matt. Uh, it was a pleasure sponsoring you through NFTZ. And I know a lot of happy people uh, are, are happy to see that you crossed the finish line in Berlin. Yep. So today at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Mountain Time is a PB. MC DAO meeting. So if you're part of that DAO, definitely try and go to Clubhouse tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 Mountain, uh, and take part in the discussion. There might be some interesting dis discussion that might push the DAO forward. I love what PBMC is doing. They're the NFT staking platform. It's a DAO around it. Clay Oglesby is behind it. I think Nathan Wells and several others. So check that out. I'm looking forward to seeing it. This materialize. I probably won't be able to make a clubhouse. It's just past my bedtime, but I'll be there in spirit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I love what PBMC is doing. Uh, lot, a great team behind them. I'll definitely check it out. So moving on, Diso, Diso Mira posted some interesting stats yesterday about what's happening on Diso blockchain. And all indicators show that everything's moving up. And this is definitely a very, very positive thing. Uh, so I'll just go over a few of the stats. Daily active users yesterday were up 6.59%. And do you know when this is from 6.9%? I believe it's day over day, I day believe. Day. So that it was up 6.59% up to 3,541 daily active users, meaningful active users. Uh, worked at 321, which is down slightly 3.31%. Uh, and these are active users that I'm assuming are engaging uh, more than just signing up and, and clicking a couple of yeah. times. Uh, new, new named user accounts yesterday, 2,484. So these are new users that are coming on and creating an account. And that was up 11.78%. That does Posting include comments. bots. There were some bots that were signing up. I noticed that over the last couple of days. So that number does include those bots. But I think for the vast majority are likely real people. Or I, I guess the vast majority of daily actives would be real people. Right. Uh, posts and comments were up 4.58% to 8,475. Not bad. Social was up 20% to 36,814. And social, I assume, means any form of engagement, liking, diamonding, commenting, uh, you name it. Uh, NFT actions were up 26.54% to 20,572. Uh, and if you go to the post that we linked to, he posts additional details about some of the members that have the highest daily transactions. Uh, definitely check it out. Yeah, very informative. Keep it up, Diso Mirror. So moving on, the top NFT bidders over the last 24 hours, according to NFTZ, these people bid on the most NFTs on the Diso blockchain in the last day. Meta Philosopher back at number one, followed by Sagar, Ashisha, Procrustes, Nordian, Zer One, OTZ Gallery, Snap to Earn, Peter H, and Vishal Gulia. And the top diamond creators over the last 24 hours, according to our friends at Altum Base, uh, these people received the most diamonds or tips on their posts and replies on the DSO blockchain in the last day. Stargeezer was number one. He's doing a lot of really cool things with Note Me, which is a, a subscription service. Uh, he made a nice post of showing some of the functionality from a creator standpoint. Definitely check that out. Just go to his account. Uh, after Stargeezer was a Kagris, Be It Me, Not You, William Laurent. Cloutpunk, Malt Christ, Exus, Spunk Art, Zian Mead, and Ask the Audience. And uh, what are today's events? Thanks. Yeah, to congratulations Katie. to those top earners. And thanks to Miss Katie Ann once again. The top events today are 1 p.m. Eastern Time is the Academic Web 3 Conference with Sean Tron on Entra. Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Time is the Metaverse Mondays with Landon MServe on Entra. At 8 p.m. Eastern Time is Investor Office Hours live on Entra with Michael Mara and angel investor Scott Kalick. And Miss Katie Ann has this set down at 11 p.m. Eastern Time. I thought it was 10 p.m. Eastern Time. I know it's 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Maybe I'm confusing the time zones. But she has yeah, 11 p.m. So I, I would think that would be 10. So it's either 10 or 11. I would check at 10, though. 
Uh, on Clubhouse is a PBMC Dow meeting with Clay Oglesby, Knight 10, Miss Katie Ann, Rhubarb, Zian Mead, Spunk Art, Conchi, All Things Creative, Mike R35, Tobias Schmid, French Connector, Ryan Elf, and Lisa Jane. So definitely check those events out if you have the time. Uh, great to see a lot of these community events coming back to DSO. And everybody have a great rest of your weekend. We'll t- I mean, rest of your Monday. I will talk, we will talk to you. And tomorrow. happy Rosh Hashanah to the Jewish uh, de Yes, indeed.